Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I'm revisiting the Jeskai Legendary Archetype, a deck that's near and dear to my heart as it has a ton of cool interactions, and we are making great use of some legendary creatures such as Sten Paranoid Partisan, which can give our artifacts a 1 mana discount if we name artifact when it enters, and then at 3 mana there's Urza, Lord Protector, which also gives our artifacts a 1 mana discount, so these can allow for some very explosive turns, especially once Relic of Legends is involved. This this can tap an untapped legendary creature we control to add one mana of any color. This also ignores summoning sickness, so that can allow us to very quickly empty our hand, especially alongside Teferi who slows the sunset. We're mainly using the plus one ability in this deck, as we can untap a land, an artifact, and a creature all at once. So if we have a relic of legends with a legendary creature, we can essentially generate plus two mana with Teferi's plus one ability, and by untapping a land that's plus three mana all at once, and that can allow us to add more creatures to the board and eventually ramp into some 8 and 9 mana artifacts such as Cityscape Leveler which can destroy an opposing non-land permanent when it gets cast and whenever it attacks, can even unearth it for 8 mana to bring it back one last time. And then there's the portal to Phyrexia, making the opponent sacrifice three of their creatures when it enters a battlefield, and then every upkeep we can bring back a creature from the graveyard and turn it into a Phyrexian as well. And we can ramp into these expensive artifacts, also thanks to the Might Stone and Weak Stone, which is a great card in a lot of decks, can enter the battlefield either drawing two cards or giving a creature minus five, minus five, so perfect for taking out a shield root at five toughness for instance, can tap for two colorless, and much like other power stones, this mana cannot be spent to cast a non-artifact spells, so we can still cast our artifacts with it, and we can still activate abilities, of which there are many in this deck. We can also potentially play a Reckoner Bankbuster after playing a Mindstone and Weakstone, and then it also has a 2-mana activated ability to draw a card, it's another nice source of card advantage. We can maybe reconfigure a Reality Chip using some of that colorless mana, and that can help us play lands and cast spells off the top of our deck. And we can also potentially activate a Thran Spider, which is great in and of itself as a 3-mana 2-4 with reach. When it enters, it gives each player a tapped Power Stone token, which we can potentially use to ramp out a turn 4 Might Stone and Weak Stone. And then we also have a 7-mana activated ability, where we get to take a look at the top 4 cards of our library, reveal an artifact card from among them, and put it into our hand. So that's another great mana sink, especially once we have Teferi generating a ton of mana. And Teferi can also untap the Might Stone and Weak Stone, to potentially generate plus two mana there as well. And then we also have some legendary lands in our mana base that can also benefit from controlling legendaries as they will get a nice discount and channeling also counts as an activated ability so we can also use our various power stones to pay for those. Iganjo can deal for damage to an attacking or blocking creature, Soaring City can bounce something and then Crucible can make two one ones. And then we also have two copies of Jora as another cheap legendary to enable our Relic of Legends. And this also shines against blue counterspell decks such as the Haughty Jin Mono Blue deck, since we can just activate Jora over and over to put artifacts in play, which the opponent wouldn't be able to counter. And then we can still sink our mana into maybe activating Bankbuster to draw, or maybe even a Thran Spider if it gets to that point. And then of course our late game also involves a melding Urza with the Might Stone and Weak Stone, which will give us Urza Planeswalker as another great source of interaction to maybe exile opposing permanents, draw extra cards, maybe make some 1-1 soldiers on the ground to block with, so a ton of versatility there. And then uh, the rest of our mana base also includes four copies of Plaza of Heroes as a perfect multicolored land in this deck, since all of our colored spells are legendary, which the Plaza can fix for. And then we can also maybe activate it to save one of our legendary creatures by giving it hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. And then I'm also playing a one of Blast Zone, which is great at fighting opposing aggro decks that have a lot of one drops, since we can just activate Blast Zone right away to blow them up. But we can even untap it with Teferi if we want to put extra counters on it and activate it in the same turn so that can also catch some opponents off guard. So yeah, that's our Jeskai Legends, and now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and I like keeping this one. Sten, great combo with Relic, and then Teferi to generate even more mana. Now we just need to draw an expensive Curve Topper. Opponent Mono Black so far. If they answer this, I can still play a backup and maybe a bank buster next turn. And our opponent's got the cut down. So 
uh, try again. Can make immediate use of the discount. And then next turn plate the fairy, maybe. Infernal Grasp. Alright, hopefully find another legendary creature soon to combine with our relic. Luckily no shield right here. So if I play Teferi, I might just use a minus ability, since plussing doesn't really help me in any way. And then if they have Planeswalker removal, at least we get a card back. And reality chip to go with relic seems fine. So next turn I can play reality chip, play relic, and with Teferi we would still have quite a bit of mana available. Shieldred is scary. Although we can potentially take it out with Leveler. Next turn already if uh, Reality Chip survives and Teferi does. Although that's a tall order here since we don't have any great blocks for Shieldred. Although now with backup Reality Chip, things may get more interesting. Teferi can uh, probably plus here. And then may end up dying to Shieldred. And then next turn we would have 5, 6, 7 mana. So if we draw a land we can actually play Leveler. And I may be able to activate Bankbuster here still. So play Relic. Play Reality Chip. And then there's a portal to Phyrexia on top of our deck. So, let us make a mana, make another mana, and then plus the fairy. And then we can still activate Bankbuster to draw. And see what's next. Joyra. So that's another legendary creature to go with Relic. Yeah, we'll pass it back. So I'm one mana short of activating Plaza of Heroes here. But I will save the fairy. Since we have another reality chip in hand. Flash Gorger. That's fine. Might end up dying to a portal to Phyrexia soon. So, step one, play Reality Chip. See, Might Stone and Weak Stone on top of our deck. So, tap for mana. Plus the Fairy. That resolves, and then we can cast Leveler. Taking out Shieldred. The fairy's at 4 loyalty, so it might be able to survive an attack from the Flash Gorger. And then next turn it should be trivial to cast Portal. Uh -huh. Undying Malice saves Shieldred here. Fair enough. If we don't want to block Shieldred with a Leveler, I can always crew Bankbuster and jump with that instead. Now at 6 toughness it also survives Mightstone and Weakstone. Opponent just attacking with a Flesh Gorger. And a Corrupt for 6 mana, dealing 6 damage as they have 6 swamps. Taking out Reality Chip, fair enough. So that's going to make it harder to generate a ton of mana with Teferi. We still have a Jora as an extra legendary creature. So let's take a look at our options here. If I play Jora, then we have three, four, five mana, plus three more from Teferi. So we're one short of casting Portal, I believe. Now we still have a Leveler to take out Shieldred here. And then I could just play Mightstone to take out Flesh Gorger, and that keeps us in a pretty good position. So, let's just do that instead. And 
and then we can still draw with our bank buster after taking out Shieldred. To maybe hit our land drop. Find another Teferi. So now if I plus one, I can untap Bankbuster, untap Joyra, untap a land, and that way we can still activate Bankbuster a second time. And there's our land drop for the turn. Okay. Still at 15, so even if they have another Corrupt to go upstairs, we're safe. And the leveler plus portal combo is gonna deal with them pretty quickly. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems reasonable. Joyra can put in some good work with lots of artifacts to put in play for free. And then we can use our leftover mana to maybe draw with Bankbuster, or we can uh, reconfigure Reality Chip to play Spells of the Top. Mightstone and Weakstone, also something we can try and ramp towards. And our opponent seems to be holding a burn spell, but at 3 toughness, Jora should be safe for now. It's gonna be a Festival Crasher, okay. So that can threaten to become a bit larger. We can channel Soaring City here, since we have a Legendary, and can put a second one in play as well. So for now we'll pass. And then see what's up. Opponent with a Forge Chanter. It's another prowess creature similar to Crasher. And our opponent's not gonna commit any attacks yet. So in that case, probably put in Bankbuster, draw with Bankbuster. And a land means we can hang on to Soaring City for later. And a Relic was a great draw too. So I can put Relic in play for free with Jora. Maybe do it now. And then I can play Reality Chip. And let's see. Could also just cast a Mightstone and Weakstone right now. If I play Reality Chip first, I'll have three, four mana available. It's not quite enough to play Mightstone afterwards. So maybe the most mana efficient place to just do it now. And then take out Festival Crasher, which seems like the scarier of the two creatures. We have plenty of card advantage, so I'm not worried about needing to draw with the Mightstone. And we can draw with Bangbuster again here, which I think I prioritize over playing a second, since we can maybe put it in play with Jora. Swiss Spear. So we might see our opponent unload some instants and sorceries to enable prowess. Jora has served as well. We're still at 20, but that's about to change. And we've got another legendary to enable Relic of Legends at least. Hoping to find an Urza. Teferi could be great. And there's Teferi. So step one, play Reality Chip. See a uh, land on top of our deck. So tap this for mana. Then we probably use Mightstone and Weakstone. Play it to Fairy, untap Mightstone and Weakstone, Reality Chip and a land. Can draw with Bankbuster, which will also make a pilot, although we can maybe keep that as an instant speed play. Okay, could also channel Soaring City at instant speed potentially, but I like playing Bankbuster. And then I think we pass. So we have quite a few things we can still do here between drawing with the Bankbusters, channeling Soaring City, could even activate Plaza. Alright, second Swiss Spear. And a Reckless Impulse. We'll let that resolve.
opponent did have a pause at the very start of the game for one mana, so I do think they might have a play with fire. And they're kind of incentivized to play it before damage resolves, so we can maybe block with reality chip, make them use a play with fire on it, and then bounce the swift spear that's being blocked by reality chip so we don't lose it. And then the question is, do we want to make a pilot token here that does allow us to crew the other bankbuster, so may not be a bad idea. And we could also now channel Iganjo. So, ton of options here. Let's crew. See an Urza on top of our deck, so that's going to be a great way to take over. Go to blocks, and then... How about we block the two Swift Spears? And then see if they want to go to damage. And then we can probably respond to any instant they play. Opponent's going to try and Lightning Strike Bankbuster. So, yeah, how about we use Igansha to kill Swift Spear instead of bouncing anything? Reality Chip still survives. And now we'll let these resolve. And our opponent explodes. Don't even need to show them Urza. They're already way too far behind. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's not perfect, but if we can find a blue or white source, then we can cast Partisan, and the rest of our hands becomes much better. So I'll give it a try here, especially on the draw. Okay, there we go. So I could play a turn to Partisan. And then unload a nice part of my hand on the following turn. And now with a backup, I'm not too scared if the first one gets answered. Could still play a Partisan plus a Bankbuster next turn, for instance. But if it survives, we could set up some more exciting plays. A Relic of Legends basically pays for itself, since we can tap stun for mana right away. Opponent's a Sultai Graveyard deck with Death Bonnet Sprout. Okay, and Reality Chip is also free with a Relic of Legends out. Blast Zone could also deal with both Sprouts for what it's worth. So we get to have a pretty sweet turn. Play Bankbuster, and then we can still play a Thran Spider. Okay. So we got to cast 10 mana's worth of cards on turn 3. Opponent's got Slogurk, not too surprising, good synergy with putting lands in the graveyard. And there is a Mind Stone on top of our deck. Okay, so if we want to reconfigure Reality Chip, definitely tap it for mana first with Relic while it's still a creature. And then I might be able to cast my uh, Mind Stone off the top. So let's say we reconfigure... Onto Thrain Spider. And then cast Might Stone and Weak Stone. Which then also lets us draw with the Bankbuster. And uh, do we want to take out Slogurk? Not necessarily, since our opponent will be able to get all those lands back. So we could just draw two instead. And then play a Bankbuster. And I can still draw with one as well. But I have to do it now to make sure we use the floating mana. Okay, that was a pretty good turn, all things considered. And we found Urza, so we can potentially melt that in the near future. The Omnivore to provide more card advantage. And we'll soak up three damage here. Could activate Blast Zone to deal with the uh, two Hulks. For now, play land for free. And then if I play Urza, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 mana left over. So that's enough to meld. So that seems like a good idea. I guess we can even tap Urza for mana first. So that's one more available. And then, yeah, we can meld. And we have a backup Might Stone at the ready. And what do we want to do here? Maybe exile both Grolnok and Slogurk. 
Although Slurgurg still works when it gets exiled, it simply cares about leaving the battlefield. So instead, maybe just exile Grolnok and then make some tokens. Which can also help crew Bangbuster, perhaps. My army never tires. And for now, pass the turn. And then I might end up activating Blast Zone to deal with the Hulks. Opponent moves to combat. All at Urza. So do I want to crew a Bankbuster? I think we still avoid killing Slogurk if we can. So I can block and then chump chump. That seems fine. Damage happens. Opponent can finish off Thran Spider, that's okay. So now Reality Chip becomes a creature again, so we can actually tap it for mana to draw with our Bankbuster. Plus we also get a basic, so that helps with that as well. So end of turn draw. Untapped, a fairy's great. So we have a wealth of options, but uh, step one, maybe activate Blast Zone. And then we can make some more tokens. Maybe we can draw to discard. Another Might Stone on top. So... Can play the fairy, which helps us generate more mana by untapping the lands and creatures. Opponent negates, fair enough. In that case, do I still want to play a spider here? And we'll pass it back. And our opponent has seen enough too much value from Urza Planeswalker. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hands got a lot of expensive cards, although Mightstone can help ramp into those. Question is if we can survive long enough to cast it in the first place. And my early game's not great, but we could maybe find a Relic of Legends to ramp into this a turn early. Urza and the Paranoid Partisan all help cast a Mightstone on four. So I'll try it. Opponent red green. And there's our paranoid partisan. So we can play that on turn two. Opponent's got the beast caller. Yeah, I mean, we could also play reality chip first and then play this next turn. That's probably alright. And gives us a blocker to hold off the beast caller at least for a turn. Devastator, 2 2 flyer. So next turn, Might Stone maybe killing a Beast Caller. And then the turn after we could already cast a Leveler. Partners, that's bad news. Probably gonna be what we take out with our Might Stone instead here. And do I wanna chump Beast Caller? I guess we could wait another turn to do that. If we're at 10 next turn, they might grow Beast Caller again and then I'll chump. And then for now, just play Mightstone. Take out partners. Chump with Chip on Beast Caller and turn after cast a leveler, destroying the Devastator. Invigorating Hot Spring could be quite dangerous for next turn. So we're at 5. And we get to cast our leveler. Take out Devastator, so we still have a chance here, unless our opponent's got a time your safekeeping. 
which Gaia's Gift also works. Alright, fair enough. So a turn 5 leveler wasn't quite good enough here. Next turn, Portal to Phyrexia would have been a nice way to stabilize. But yeah, the flyer got the job done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's pretty decent. Spider can maybe set up a turn 4 Mightstone and Weakstone. And then Teferi untapping. Mightstone makes it easier to activate Spider. Would like to pick up a 2-drop, but on the play we might be okay without one. And then eventually we'll need an extra land as well. Iganjo also makes great use of our power stones. And our opponent's a black-white sacrifice deck, perhaps. Okay, play spider. And then next turn, might stone to maybe draw two cards. Inspiring Overseer, fair enough. So there are some life gain synergies at play. And we want to trade. Yeah, I think that's fine. Two for reach would be a good blocker for Overseer. But uh, fine to take the trade. And then now play out a Ganjo. Can still play Might Stone. If I play Sten first, will be one short. So let's just get this out there. And then draw two, maybe even find a Reckoner Bankbuster we can still play afterwards. But a uh, land is good too. So next turn I have access to eight mana for artifacts already. Circuit Mender, another life gain card. So what's our sequence here? Can maybe play Sten and then reconfigure Reality Chip. Which uses our Power Stone mana. See what's on top. Jura. So I guess we'll be a mana short of casting Jura here. Since we need more colored mana for it. But I still like reconfiguring. And then pass a turn for now. Sarah Paragon can replay the fetch lands and immediately gain a bunch of life. Next turn threatens to replay Sadistic Pilgrim. Okay. Take four. And Urza on top of our deck. That seems worth playing. And another Might Stone. Sign me up. Three mana. Sort of replaces itself and can take out Sarah Paragon. And then play a land of the top. Play a free Reckoner Bankbuster. And a Jura, why not? And then we can still draw with a Bankbuster using our Power Stone. Okay. And uh, might as well hit for two. That was a good turn. Next turn we can maybe meld Urza. And plenty of other ways to spend our mana. Another Paragon. Okay, so they can immediately replay Pilgrim. Take two. Blast Zone of the top, and a Teferi of the top seems nice too. And then I think I'm still gonna have enough mana to meld afterwards. So, tap this, and then we can activate Joyra, just to get the extra counters, even if we don't put Reality Chip in place, since I'm gonna untap it with Teferi's plus ability. Untap my Zone and Weak Stone, Joyra, and a land. And then we can meld. Okay, so I'm probably getting rid of Sarah Paragon with a minus. Could minus again getting rid of Overseer. Although that leaves us with few blockers. So maybe I prefer just making some soldiers here. Sure. 
and then pass it back. I can still draw with Bankbuster and activate Jora if needed, which could put an emergency reality chip in play if I need an extra block or two. Alright, the Golden Argosy. Pretty good synergy with cards like Overseer and Circuit Mender. So we might have to take that out with Urza's Minus. Only a fool End of turn draw. And activate Jora. Alrighty, play our free land off the top as usual. See another Sten. Can maybe draw that with a Bank Buster. Relic of Legends is pretty great too here with all these legendary creatures available. Could have also activated Jora to put it in play instead. Both are reasonable. Okay, Urza wants to plus and then maybe minus. And then we might be okay with cashing out our Urza here. Has done enough for us and we can maybe assemble it a second time. So I'm just gonna draw to discard. And then maybe minus on the Argosy. And then we can discard a land at this stage. So that's dealt with. Get some more value off the top. And what's next? Can uh, plus the ferry for extra mana, have a ton of bank busters we can activate too. So let's maybe start there. Okay, another relic I'll play. Back up the ferry. Alrighty. Um, can activate Jora, put in another relic. And then do we minus the ferry at this stage? Try and find one of our finishers, so like a portal to Phyrexia. Another Urza would also be pretty great. But I'll go for portal. And we see a leveler on top. Alrighty, I think we're good to pass the turn now. Might have to discard to hand size a little bit. Could also channel Crucible. So we have to discard fewer cards to hand size. Okay, and then uh, pass a turn. Discard two lands. I've got a reach creature to block Overseer now. And next turn we can probably deal with most of the opponent's board. Jora could put a leveler in play, although we miss out on the cast trigger that way. Virus Beetle makes me discard, that's fine. And another one. I'll get rid of Paranoid Partisan. And end of turn still draw with Bankbuster. And our opponent has seen enough. Next turn can cast both Portal and Leveler most likely in the same turn. And that's going to be too much for them to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems a little slow. No early creatures, no Relic of Legends. So I'm tempted to mulligan. This is a bit better. And then Jora has good synergy with Bankbuster and Thranspider, so probably get rid of Teferi since I can't afford to bottom any lands. Opponent on a red deck. Okay. So hopefully we can keep our Jorai in play for a few turns. Automaton, so artifact aggro. And then I'll have to take a damage if I want to keep Soaring City as a potential channel land. Don't know if that's going to be super relevant when we have to pay the ward costs. So I'll just save myself some damage. And then next turn we can put in Bankbuster, maybe cast Spider, or we can just draw off Bankbuster instead. Ah, Kami's Flare. At least they didn't have a modified creature yet. And we can just cast a Spider now. Found another Teferi. 
Now, sadly, your opponent's probably packing some artifacts, so they will be able to make use of the Power Stone token. Does not trigger Automaton, since it's only when they cast artifact spells. Next turn, we could use the Fairy, untap Power Stone and a land, as well as maybe Spider after attacking with it. And that can help us play Bankbuster afterwards. Opponent with a Mutt discarding another, and then unearthing a second. Although that one again doesn't trigger Automaton since it's not cast. Could see Voltage Surge take out Spider, sacrificing the Power Stone it seems. Or maybe the Mutt they unearthed. Okay, so we're taking four here. And now we don't have a blocker to protect the fairy anymore. A reality chip is helpful. So the fairy into reality chip seems to be the play now. Another Bankbuster coming up. So try and keep the Fairy alive, which will give us a nice mana advantage. Second Automaton could be dangerous. Would love to find a Might Stone and Weak Stone, since the two mana it generates is enough to pay for Ward. And I think we block here. Even though they could have another Burn Spell. Play with Fire was going to get us either way. Let's see, can we actually play Blast Zone, put a counter on it, and blow it up in the same turn thanks to Teferi? I think we might be able to, thanks to the Power Stone also making one mana for it. So that can just wipe the opponent's board here. That seems powerful. Plus. And then we can untap our Power Stone token with it as well. And then I guess we'll just pass here, since I won't have the mana to also activate Bankbuster. And yeah, just a two counter blast zone enough to prompt a concession from our opponent, since we're going to wipe their board with this one simple trick onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Stan could also name Planeswalker to set up turn three to Fairy, but in the long run, probably still better to name Artifact with it. Turn one mountain from our opponent. They may be holding a play with fire here. And they're going to point it upstairs. That's very aggressive. One fewer burn spell that can kill our partisan. Could also opt for a turn two reality chip instead. Uh -huh. So blue red wizards or blue red spells more accurately. So it's then unlikely to survive admittedly. But uh if they have to point a burn spell at it, then we're more likely to keep Urza in play, which is probably still more important. So yeah, I'll hang on to Soaring City. Have to take one. Could have played Deserted Beach turn one instead of uh, the Stormcarved Coast. But I think hanging on to Soaring City when we have all these legendaries is going to be worth it. Okay, play with fire number two. Grows Balmor, but at least they weren't able to add another creature to the board. And a third play with fire goes upstairs. The fairy can gain some life back with the plus one ability, so that's helpful. And a relic is great too. Still play Urza, and then at four toughness, realistic for it to survive. And then next turn we get to have a very nice turn. Impulse goes digging, finds two mountains. And Belmore attacks for two. Alrighty, so step one, play Relic of Legends. Then we can play Teferi here. Can plus. And then we can still play Reality Chip and keep up Soaring City's channel ability. And uh, 
Let's see, this costs me two mana at the moment, so I can attack for two with Urza if I'd like. And then next turn we can maybe reconfigure a reality ship. Mechanized Warfare, okay. So now Balmor deals an extra point of damage and a Phoenix Chick. I imagine they'll just go face here, but maybe they want to take out the Fairy first. And then now we can bounce. They weren't able to replay Balmor since we waited. And time to reconfigure, but before we reconfigure Reality Chip, we want to tap it for mana. Since once we equip it, it no longer counts as a legendary creature. Play line of the top. Play a relic. And a cityscape leveler. Can we play it here? I doubt it, but let's do the math anyway. So we have three, four, and then Teferi adds three more mana. And we get a discount from Urza, so we actually can cast it here. That's pretty nice. So tap Urza for mana. Then plus. And cast it. And take out Warfare. Okay, that was a turn. Teferi at 6 loyalty. Gaining us more life. And our opponent's very far behind on board now. We're drawing extra cards off the top of our deck. At some point we'll find a Might Stone and Weak Stone. So our opponent's got their work cut out for them. A replays Balmor, two cards in hand. Maybe if they have enough burn spells here they can take us out right now, but I doubt it. And the festivities would have been pretty good with a Warfare still out there. And a Lightning Strike, alright, so our opponent takes out Urza. But had to use a lot of burn spells to do so. And we still have other creatures we can reconfigure onto. Jora on top of our deck. So... Probably fine to reconfigure onto Leveler. Should have tapped Reality Chip for mana first, that was a mistake. I think we'll be fine. Keep playing things until we maybe find a land we can play. Mindstone and Weakstone I should be able to play after untapping with Teferi. And I'll have to play a land as well. And just take out Balmor seems the safest. Can attack with Leveler, take out Phoenix Chick. Can still draw with Bankbuster. And next turn our opponent just dead to the Leveler as well. Alright, so we got to see our Jeskai Artifact a Legends deck in action, and while I don't necessarily believe it will be a tier 1 standard deck, since it still has kind of a pretty weak early game, not having a ton of spot removal, and relies pretty heavily on some legendary creature surviving and drawing some good mana acceleration early with Relic of Legends. It still has enough redundancy, I think, with both Urza and Sten as mana reduction. We've got multiple three mana ramp cards with both Spider and Relic of Legends, and then our late game of melding Urza, of uh, casting Cityscape Leveler and eventually Portal to Phyrexia seems pretty good. So I do like the deck a lot. It has a ton of cool synergies, especially with Relic of Legends and the Fairy untapping some of our permanents. So it's a ton of fun to play if you happen to have most of the cards for it already. I highly recommend giving it a try. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.